Welcome to Pure Math 030. This is an exercise on a variety of reflection type questions. So it's not going to really break new ground in terms of concepts, but it's some practice on what we were doing last time and a few variations. So um, start off with this function f at x is equal to 2 over x plus 3 plus 1. Now this is a more complicated one because it in fact is a reciprocal function but it has been translated three units to the left and one unit up and we also have a two on top. Now you'll see later that that's a vertical stretch but I, I'm really not too concerned about the graph and what it looks like yet. I'm more concerned with um, finding the equations under certain reflections. So if we want to find the equation of these three reflected graphs First off, y is equal to negative f at x. And I will remind everybody, I don't think you need it, but this is a reflection in the x-axis. And you do need to be good at that identification. And you will also recall, I hope, that there are two ways to solve these problems. One is that you just put the negative in front of the graph, which is easy to do, and in fact easier. But I'm going to stick with the other method that I've been doing. Even though it throws in an extra step, it has the advantage of total consistency. Because when you're reflecting in the x-axis, all you're really doing is replacing y with negative y. Because it really is a vertical transformation. The graph might have been opening up, now it's opening down. So we will get negative y is equal to 2 over x plus 3 plus 1. And you don't want to keep it in that form because the y has got a factor in front of it, a negative 1. So I'm now going to divide by negative 1. And if you divide by negative 1, it means both terms are going to get divided by negative 1 or multiplied by negative 1. The way I'm going to write that is I'll have the negative on top. So negative 2 over x plus 3, and then minus 1. So what has happened as a result of all this, um, both terms were that underwent a, a sign change. And if you were to graph this, you would get a mirror image over the x-axis. I'll bring up a new screen and let's take a look at the next one. Same equation to start with, and now I want to go f at negative x. And here's our graph that we started with. So I'm going to also make a note here that this is a reflection in the y-axis. Anytime you replace x with negative x, you get a reflection in the y-axis. So you can write this a number of ways. I'm going to take it like this. I'm going to write a three-prong equation y is equal to egg f at negative x. This is a fancy way of writing it. You don't need to do this, but it's kind of a nice touch. And this becomes 2 over negative x plus 3 plus 1. So all that happened is the x changed to negative x. And then this could now be written as y is equal to 2 over negative x plus 3 plus 1. I'm going to leave it like that, although on a related question on the previous lesson, I played around with it by factoring out a negative 1. I'm not going to do that now, although I will do that for future questions. That's good enough. Let's take a look at the next one. x equal f at y. And this is a reflection in the line y equal x. This is the equation we're working with. But I will note a reflection in the line y equal x. So in other words, it's an inverse. 
And you've got a few things you can do with it. This is going to be a little more complicated algebraically. But I would always start by writing it without f and x using the y variable instead. It'll make the substitution easier. And remember, to get the inverse, you switch the x and the y around. So this, instead of y equal to this, is x is equal to 2 over y plus 3 plus 1. And then we isolate the new y. What I'm going to do, I'll subtract the 1 away from both sides. So x minus 1 is equal to 2 over y plus 3. And I'm going to do this on the same page. And then I'm going to multiply both sides by y plus 3, or cross multiply, if you like. So it becomes y plus 3, in brackets, multiplied by x minus 1 is equal to 2. And then by isolating the new y, I will divide both sides by x minus 1. So we get 2 over x minus 1. And then finally, subtract 3 away. So 2 over x minus 1 minus 3. And you could write this in function notation, or you could just leave it like this, which is all I'm going to do. So those ones are more complicated. Let's take a look at the next question. And this is actually just not really a question. It's just a definition. So you can see this lesson I'm sort of all over the place. It's just odds and ends that have to do with reflections. Now, invariant points are points that are unchanged under a transformation. So it simply means that when you reflect, usually reflect, but it could be other things as well, when you transform a graph or a function, the point is still on that graph. So to illustrate this, if you were to consider the function f of x is equal to the square root of x minus 2, a square root function with a translation of 2 to the right. Now, on your calculator, you probably don't require this, but it would be y1 is equal to square root, open bracket, x minus 2, close bracket. And when you do graph it, you should get something looking like this. A square root function that now has its starting point at 2 comma 0. Now, if we take that graph and reflect it in the x-axis, what you're going to be getting is f of x is equal to negative root x minus 2. So the negative, you've replaced y with negative y, or if you like, just written the, the negative on the other side. And on your calculator, it would be going like that, and you would get the graph on the bottom, y is equal to negative f of x. So notice the notation I use, I just refer to the first one as y equal f of x, I refer to the second one as y equal negative f of x. So it's just a shorter way of, of illustrating that. You don't need to write the full equation out, although you could. And I'm going to take note of that point 2 comma 0, because it was on the original curve, and then it's also on the next curve. So 2 comma 0 is what we call an invariant point. It's unchanged under, under the transformation. So we reflected the curve, and the point 2 comma 0 is still on the curve. And that's pretty much all you can do with something like that. But you will get test questions that ask that, basically. Um, what point is invariant under this particular transformation. Now I'm going to do another question. This is on transform graphs. And this is simply a graph question. I'm um, going to take an unknown function, y equal f of x. There's no equation for it. And I'm going to undergo two transformations on this, and I want to redraw it. Now, the workbook is full of these questions, and these are excellent test questions besides. So sketch first off y is equal to f at negative x. 
And there's the graph. Going to remind everybody that this is a reflection in the y-axis. And I'm going to do this one by hand. Now you can draw this one kind of by inspection. But really what's happening is that every point on the curve, you've got 3 comma 4, you've also got the two x-intercepts, is going to transform by having the x-coordinate change. So that 3 comma 4 is going to transform into negative 3 comma 4. And then 2 comma 0 right there is going to transform to negative 2 comma 0. 4 comma 0 will transform to negative 4 comma 0. And then you get this curve like that, or that it's not really a curve. Okay, and you can see by inspection that you've got a perfectly reflected graph in the y-axis. Then I'm going to take that same graph and now do a different transformation. So here, we've got y is equal to negative f at x minus 1. And this is a reflection in the x-axis. And I've actually got two transformations. It's also a vertical translation of one unit down. And I'm just going to write it like this. So this is the first time that we've put together two transformations. Now, as you'll see later on, there is an order of operations with it. We do the reflections, then we do the translations. Translations always last. That will be formalized later. But for now, I'll just do it. Um, a walk it through like that. So the next screen will have the image again, same y equal f at x, and let's see what we can do with it. So 3 comma 4, now I'm going to go through this one really carefully. I'm going to first off transform it by doing the reflection in x. And the reflection in x would mean that we're going to get negative 3 comma 4. So all that happens, excuse me, 3 comma negative 4, all that happens is the y coordinate changes. So the graph, if you were to roughly just rough it in, would give you this. That's the reflection. But now we have to move the whole thing down one unit. So we just pick it up, and without changing the shape, we put that vertex down there and then this point there, and then this point down one as well. So we can now draw in each of the points. This ordered pair 3 comma 4, it first turned to 3 comma negative 4, but then when it went down 1, 3 comma negative 5. Notice the x coordinate didn't change because everything we did was a vertical transformation. And then 4 comma negative 1, and then 2 comma negative 1. And that's it. So that's the idea. We'll do more of these once we have more of the transformations under control, which is just the stretches. But these are a big part of it. So thank you for your time.